Hello folks, welcome to Modular Curiosity Episode 2. This is where we're going to start learning about the basics of modular synthesis. You'll remember from Episode 1 that we had built, uh, we had installed VCV Rack, we set up our audio driver, and we used a multiple here so that when we put something into one input, it went to both outputs. Well, as I promised in episode one, there's a nicer way to do this. And so let's jump right into that. I'm going to use one of our third party modules. I'm going to come down here and it's called where mental and there's a mental mixer. So these are the two outputs right here. I'm going to take one output to the left, one output to the right, turn the volume down. And now this gives us lots of advantages. First of all, each one of these is an input for a channel. We can have different sounds on each input. We have a volume for each channel. We also have a master volume. And we have pan. There you go. So we can put any sound anywhere in the auto mix, audio mix that we want. Also, we have a mute button. Now this is incredibly helpful for setting up patches if I just want to hear one part of my patch or say just the bass drum sound or just a hi-hat sound or something like that. I can just turn individual channels on and off and solo them as I want. But let's talk more about what modular synthesis is and what is this VCO doing and what does voltage controlled oscillator mean? Well an oscillator is something that creates a sound. And you can see down here we have four different waveforms. If I put the sine there, that's a sine wave. Now, what exactly is a sine wave? Well, we're going to load up what's going to be your new favorite module, Scope, because this is incredibly useful for learning you know, what learning about waveforms. Um, you're you're going to see it's going to be incredibly useful. So I'm going to make two patches here. One of them I'm going to go to the output turn it down for just a little bit and I want the same output to also go here to the X in which will show our, uh, on a scope now that means I need to split this cable there are two ways to split the cable one I can click on the destination and drag it to the source and sure enough look at that I can change the time here to, to get more fewer or more uh, waveforms in the scope uh, very useful, very useful. However, the other way to split a cable is to go over to the source, hold down the control key, and that will create a second cable. And that gives us the same thing. Now, the oscillator just makes this, this is a sine wave, your standard, what you think of when you think of a waveform. It goes up and down, has curves top. The frequency <laughs> changes the pitch. Now I'm going to add another module here. I'm going to put in from fundamentals something called the VCA. That's a voltage controlled amplifier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here, out, and with my control key, I'm going to split this output to here. And a VCA is basically a volume knob. So if I turn the volume up, turn the volume down, look what happens to the waveform. Okay, so the height of the waveform, or what we call the amplitude, is the volume. The density of the waveform is the pitch. This is going to become really important to us. As I mute this, the next thing that's going to be very important to us is that if I want to play a song, I really don't want to have to be twisting this dial and try to hit exact notes. I mean, come on, there's no way I'm going to be able to play anything with any meaning by simply turning that. Or if I want to make something like, say, a siren sound, I can do this. But yeah, I don't really want to be doing that with my fingers. Well, you'll notice the VC in front of the oscillator, voltage controlled oscillator, and the VC in front of amplifier, voltage controlled. What does voltage control mean? Okay, I'm going to pull up another module. In this case, it's called an LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator. And you'll notice, notice that this has the same waveforms. But this is 
a low frequency oscillator, I meaning it's so slow that you don't actually, you can't actually hear it. It's not in the audible range. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, look at that. I mean, that's one wave. Look how slow that is. There's no way we could actually hear that. What this is doing is outputting what's called a control voltage. Voltage control, control voltage. We're going to take this control voltage and we're going to feed it to this, which says V slash OCT, and that's one volt per octave. So as this goes up and down, what it's doing, it's changing this frequency knob for us. And if I now unmute this, and we can see that this is making this frequency knob go up and down, and I can change the speed. Or I can make it very slow. But notice it's going really high and really low. If I just want a like a vibrato, I don't need it to go that high and low. I want the range of this low frequency oscillator to be smaller. Well, remember what we learned. Let's do this. Remember what we learned when we looked I'm going to turn that off. Looked at our waveform. That high and low, well, that's volume, right? So basically what I need to do is I need to turn down the volume of this waveform. So I'm going to go to another VCA. I'm going to come out to this. And when I turn it on, what if I turn down the volume? So I'm adjusting the range. In fact, let's go ahead and look at that in the scope. Now, if I turn up the level, uh, you know what? I don't actually want it here. What I want is this output because that's been adjusted by the VCA. There we go. Now if I turn it up, see how it's getting higher and higher? And if I change the frequency, it's the same thing that we did with the voltage controlled oscillator, but we're doing it in non-audible ranges. Now I'm going to turn this off for a moment and let's look at the other waveforms here. So let's see, let's turn that on. Here's our sine wave and it has a pretty clean, almost flute-like sound. We have other waveforms here. A triangle is very similar and I'm going to switch this over to digital which gives us a little better representation there we go. And I have to adjust the time now. There we go. That's looking better. All right. In fact, let's change the scale. That makes it even better. All right. We can see that it looks a lot like the sine wave, except it has a pointy turnaround at the peak in the valley. And notice that it's a little bit brighter, a little bit maybe harsher. Let's compare the two. So the waveform makes quite a difference in the sound. Let's see what the sawtooth waveform looks like. Yep, it looks like a sawtooth. Looks like the teeth of a, of a handsaw. How about the square wave? Yep, it looks square. Now, this is interesting. For the square wave, we have a pulse width knob, which... Do we want the first half of the pulse to be narrow and the second half wide, or we, do we want the first half wide and 
the second half narrow. Now notice there's not a lot of difference between the second half narrow and the first half narrow. But what does make a difference is the sound while it's changing. Doesn't that sound cool? Well, that sounds like we need some modulation. So let's take a triangle wave from here, run it through our VCA so we can control it. I'm going to put it here to pulse width modulation and nothing happens. Why is that? Well, because of this knob, which is saying how much control voltage do we want? Well, this knob is basically doing what this VCA does. So I can completely get rid of this put this directly into pulse width modulation, and this is basically the same thing as this, turned all the way down. As I turn it up, we can see and also hear that this modulation is affecting this pulse width. And right there you're getting the insight into why modular synthesis is so cool. You'll notice when you look at really huge racks like Colin Bender's synthesizer rack or Richard Devine or, or you know any of the really big racks that you see on YouTube, if you were to really look at their racks closely, you'd see that they might only have four, five, maybe six uh, tone producing modules. Everything else in that huge rack is control voltage, things that make really interesting control voltages, things that turn stuff on and off, that's called gates and triggers. That's what the VC of the oscillator and the VC of the amplifier mean. Now, for example, what if I took the same triangle wave and I put it here? I'm going to control the VCA from the triangle wave. Well, before I even turn it on, we can see what happens. I'm turning the volume up and down, right? Let's listen to it. And of course, I can change the frequency. And what if I change the waveform? Now, I wonder what a square wave would do. Let's find out. Well, that makes sense because a square wave is either on or off, right? It's up or down. So we're simply turning the volume on and off. Pretty cool. The next module we're going to look at is a filter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the output and I'm going to go into the filter and we have what's called a low-pass filter and a high-pass filter. You will tend to get the most effect with a low-pass filter. And what that means, it is literally going to allow more of the low frequencies through. And I'm going to bring this over to Sawtooth Wave. And fewer of the upper frequencies. So let's turn that on and see what it sounds like. Okay, our Sawtooth Wave, which used to sound like that, pretty harsh. We're now going to filter it by rolling off a lot of that high end. And what happens is, as we turn this down, the cutoff frequency is changing. And what it's, it doesn't just stop every frequency above wherever this limit is. What it does is it rolls off frequencies. They get progressively quieter above a certain level. And this frequency cutoff determines what that level is. We also have a drive, which is basically a volume. And we have resonance, which is really interesting. That can sort of make this filter itself resonate. Hear that upper pitch come in? And if we go too high, we could actually put the filter into the self-resonating mode. See if I can get it there. Okay, I'll have to play with that. There is a. Ooh, ooh, what was it? Well, that's interesting. 
So this frequency cutoff, what if we voltage controlled that? So sure enough, let's, we have a frequency input knob. Let's put that to our triangle wave and see what happens. And I'm not hearing much. Well, there's a couple things. One, we have to adjust the frequency CV. And we can still adjust this and kind of show where's the center point of that. And maybe I want, there we go, a bigger range. Actually, that's just making it louder, isn't it? Because it's not affecting this. Let's add some resonance. Whoa, there we go. Let's turn the pitch down. Now there's a classic synthesizer sound. How cool is that? What if we put a sawtooth wave on it? Because remember, our... Let's see if I can get the time here. I'm going to try to scale it down so I can see it. There we go. So as our low frequency oscillator is going up, we're basically opening up that filter and then quickly shutting it off. So it's following the waveform. If we go to a triangle wave, we would expect that it's going to go up and down. And of course it does. And we go to a sine wave. It's essentially the same with a little bit softer tops and bottoms. Now different filters will have different sounds. For example, let's see, I think it's in the Volt. Yes, lateralis. Okay, I'm going to now put this in and use this output. And we can hear that this is a very different, different sounding filter. And if I understand correctly, I think the lateralist is based off the Moog ladder filter. So the, the Moog filter is very sought after in real modular apps or modular synthesizers. So what if we modulate this through control voltage? And nothing's happening. Why? Because we have to tell it use the control voltage by turning this up. How cool is that? Okay, folks, that's the basics of how to connect modulars to get modular units together and the basics of the difference between audio signals and control voltage signals. Think of control voltage as something that turns the knob for you. Get that concept in your head and it's gonna make a lot more sense. Your assignment for episode two is to make a wow sound. Now, don't just copy this. I want you to set up your own VCV rack and try to remember, okay, where did my sound come from? It came from an oscillator. Where did my LFO, my low frequency? Well, that's obviously an LFO. What changed the filtering? Well, that's a filter. And what kind of filter do I want to use? And what does filter do? And what does res res resonance do? Play with it. Have fun. Stay curious. And we'll see you next time in episode three. Wow, 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 wow.